Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I've had a lot of people ask me over the months, throughout the year, you know, things that I use in my tutorials, the scissors I use, where's my scoreboard from, what do I recommend in terms of tape and all those kind of things. So what I thought I'd do to kind of round up the year is I would show you my kind of go-to pieces, the things that I will always use, things that you'll see regularly feature in my videos, and I'm going to link them all below, but also I'll keep them linked in all my videos. So I'll put it under something like my favourite things for example. So I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to try not to keep it too long but like I said everything would be linked below so you can if you want to find out sizes of things or more specifics of that item then click on the link. I'm just going to talk you through quickly why I've got them and why I enjoy them. So first of all I'm going to start off with the scissors that I use. So you will regularly see these ones. I've also got these and then I have some snips. I also have lots of other scissors. I've got my fabric scissors here, which I have very badly used on paper, but that's fine. Once you sharpen them, you then don't want to, um, you know, do that again. I've also got things like this as well. So you will see me kind of chop and change. These are more, I guess, heavy duty. And um, you might have seen me cut plastic wire, things like that with them. But in terms of my paper crafting, these are my favourite ones. Now these here, I actually got when I was living in Shanghai. So they're by a company called Hay. They're made in Italy and they need a clean, but they are just wonderful scissors. Now I know a few of you have these exact ones because you've asked me for the links to these. Now unfortunately, the actual hay ones, or that was sold for within the shop hay, I can't get a link for those, but they're, these are, you can buy these exact ones, and I think people just put their own branding on them. But they're just really nice because they're so long, so you can get, you know, you can do like one nice cut, um, you know, if it's like just a, a short card or so. It's just nice, they just feel really nice. I know the ones of, you know, those of you that have got them just really like them. They've got a nice weight to them. They're just a really nice quality scissor and um, I'm really glad I've got them. So that's those. But then I've also got these ones here, which are the Tim Holtz tonic ones. And these are like a large pair of snips, really. You could use these to fussy cut, but they do have a slight perforation here, which can be a little bit frustrating. But if you're just wanting to cut stuff quickly, and to get a real nice cut then they are really nice scissors and um, again yeah apart from that perforation which is not a bad thing if you're just doing a normal cut if you're fussy cutting then I don't like it so I wouldn't use them for that anyway but otherwise they're just a really nice scissor and they're Tim Holtz you know they are good quality and then moving on to the snips, I've got these. These are my favourite ones. These are the tonic snips. You just get a really nice, again, they need a good clean, that you, but you get a lovely, when you cut right to the edge, it doesn't kind of break the cardstock, it just cuts it, you know, so it's, it's perfect for fussy cutting. They feel really comfortable in the hand, they're lightweight, um, again, just very good quality. But then also are these ones here, which are even lighter. I mean, there's nothing to them. It's, it's just, they are very, very light. These are Crafters Companion. And again, they are a nice little pair of snips. Very similar to the tonic, sorry, not tonic, the X-cut ones that I've had, which, let me have a look. Oh, hang on a minute, I have got quite a few. <laughs> here they are. They're very similar to these ones, which I've had for a while. And I do sharpen these, but I'm finding they're just, they're not, keep it, they're, they still cut nice but they're not as kind of crisp anymore. So these I guess are quite similar. Um, and then these are tonic, these are the older tonic ones but again these had a perforation on them and I didn't like it for fussy cutting so I changed it for these tonic ones which are just you know that nice um, straight cut. So those are the two that I'm currently using and I would recommend, but I would still recommend these ones. And these are a nice scissor, but if you don't like a perforation look, then don't get them, because that does irritate me a little bit. So that's the scissors. So that's what I enjoy using there. Then I've got my Cropodile, which you'll see me use a lot. Now, I guess this is a considered purchase. It is a bit more of an expense to this, but you can also go for something like this one, which is a lot cheaper. So, and it will still cut through grey boards. So you will sometimes see me go for this one if this one's, I just can't reach it or it's, I've put it down somewhere. I will also get this one. So it will also do your eyelets, okay? That will do that part there on the front. But here is your hole punch so that you can cut through a more heavy duty, you know, um, cardstock or grey board things like that. This will work through that because I've done it before. The only difference really between this and this one is this is just a lot stronger 
but you also have two hole punches here. So you've got your normal standard hole there, which is your 3 eighths of an inch, I think, and this is 1 eighth of an inch here. This one just has the 3 eighths of an inch on the top. And you also, with this one, you would have to buy, it comes, I don't know, you probably could take these out, I never have, but you just get your standard kind of eyelet um, punches there. Whereas with these here, you can rotate and you have the option of four different settings there that you slide in. And again, with this one here, you've got the two settings depending on what you're using. You can also adjust all of these pieces as well. They've got the rubber you know, if you're doing a lot of things, they are comfortable to use. So, you know, you get what you pay for, really. But this is still a nice one, if you, especially if you're starting off. These are very inexpensive. You can pick these up on Amazon. So, again, I'll share both of the links and, um, you know, see what, you know, suits you best. But if you do like using the grey board, you like making mini albums and things like that, then definitely you'll need more of an industrial style hole punch. So that's that one. Then I've got my pokey tool. To be honest, I, I pick up lots of different ones in my videos. I'm just looking at some other ones. I've got this here, which came in, no, actually this one I brought at the craft show. This was just from Every Crafts a Pound, but you also get them in some of your like little toolkits and stuff, exactly the same. This is very sharp. This is like dangerous. It's actually lethal. <laughs> but these here are your Tim Holtz ones. Now this one is blunt. It, but it will still work with things. That's why I've not thrown it away. I can still kind of, you know, pick bits up and kind of scratch with it and stuff. But this one here is the newer one and that's nice and, you know, sharp still. Although saying that, it doesn't look, it does look like it's kind of gone, but it is sharp. So the, th the reason I like these ones is they're safe and they're great for traveling because it's got the retractable pin or pokey part, whatever you're going to call that, the, the point. <laughs> so you can obviously put it away and protect it and I just put that in my pen pot. You can also hang it as well if you want to. Things like this, that's how they are. I mean, you can put a little kind of piece of foam on the end, which I have done before, but I end up losing them. So that's, yeah, my pokey tools, I do like the Tim Holtz ones. Again, just for a bit of safety and just convenience really, but you can pick these kind of things up, you know, um, in, my, in a lot of kind of craft shops and places like that. Then um, I've got my bone folder. So you always get a bone folder on your or a scoring tool on your scoreboards. So for example, I've got this one here because I'll be showing it in a moment, but that's uh, one of the ones there. Sometimes I pick that up in videos. I've also got the one on my Hunky Dory scoreboard, but I brought this one first and this is lovely, but it is quite soft. You can see I can actually bend it there, but it will also then go back again, but I still will pick it up. It's great for using on your cardstock. Now the reason why these ones now, they call them Teflon, however, Teflon is a brand, so I don't really know how they get away with calling this Teflon when it isn't the Teflon brand, but the I'll share the links to this one. I got it from the paper, the vintage paper company, I believe it is. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Teflon is a brand and not a material. So this the, the name of this material is something quite long, I can't pronounce it. It's a form of very hard plastic. And um, yeah, anyway, that's I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> so the reason I like these is because they don't leave a shine on your cardstock. So when I use this, it's this one's solid as well, this one doesn't bend. Um, but whenever I use it, you just won't get a shine on your folds. It's a very minor thing. If things like that don't bother you, then you don't need to go out and, exp and pay out. This was about £15, I think, maybe even £16. This one was a little bit less, I think this was about £8.99. It still does the job. But otherwise, you know, a normal, let me see if I've got another one. I can't see where the other ones are. I've put stuff in my drawer. But anyway, you know, this is just, I'm doing this video to show you the things that I use and why I like them. Plus, I've been crafting for a long, long time. So these are things that for me, it's like an investment. This is my bread and butter. It's, I use this every day. So to me, that was worth the money. And also, the great thing about this is nothing sticks to it. So you notice how clean that is. I've never cleaned that. That's just how it is. Whereas this one here does have a little bit more of a, I guess, a bit of a dirty finish to it. Um, and that's why they give these things that I'm sure it's got a, like a lifetime guarantee. So glue, everything, ink color, the lot, it will not stick to this. It will just come straight off. I've just got mine with my washi tape on just so that when I go to classes and any crafting kind of retreats and stuff, they, you know, I know it's my one. So, but I, I do, I love it. I really recommend it. And again, I've recommended it to quite a few of you and shared you the links to those. So that will be linked below and I will try and find this one. I've got a feeling I got this one off of Amazon or eBay, but that is obviously from a company itself. So that's those. 
then the scoreboard so you saw that I love this little one it's EK tools I can't find many small scoreboards it's not something that's quite I don't think very easy to get hold of this is an American brand I found this on Amazon I've had it for quite a while now you also have on the back um, information there on your envelopes so to you know make your own envelopes there so if you don't have the envelope punch board I'll share with that in a moment then you have this on the back and they also do it in the 12 by 12 as well so if you do like things matching um, you know you can get it in the large size but I love this little one it sits perfectly on my little storage that I made and shared it on my channel not too long ago and again you would see this feature regularly on my channel but also I have so this is the Hunky Dory adorable scoreboard and I love it, I really do and it's great because on the other side it has centimetres and on this side it has inches and you do have your little bit there as well. But the other ones that I've had and I've, you would have seen in my older tutorials is the ScorePal and this one's really nice but I did find that sometimes if you do have a card sock, because everybody kind of cuts them differently, some 12 by 12s wouldn't fit within this section. Um, and it's just little things don't they, they just kind of get you and yeah it was just nice to have a kind of a change really. However the nice thing about this one is you can clearly see all of the measurements. So you know you have to kind of look at those things and see what works for you. I didn't like the score piece that's gone, I've lost that and I found that it, it kind of got all um, marked on the ends and kind of buckled and stuff and I was going off the tracks a little bit and you just I think it's been probably quite worn it would probably still work quite well now if I started using a, a metal one within there but um, I always keep it spare you know if anybody comes around if I do go to classes it does still work um, it would certainly work perfect for just doing simple scoring on cards and stuff like that so I don't get rid of these things and it's a very very good brand and like I said it, it's apart from me not having that piece everything else does work fine so this is the other one sorry these are dusty because they've been underneath the um, they're underneath my units because I don't really use them anymore this is the stamping up one now I did really enjoy this one and the reason being is you don't have a wall on long the side or the bottom so you do you know if you have got that larger card stock you can overhang and it's brilliant but the thing that started to irritate me a bit with this and it what I, I wasn't the only one is that my stylus so this is the stylus that you get with it this goes in the bottom there I was just kind of falling like coming off the track I'd be like mid scoring and I just start going over onto other tracks and I have I have no idea why because I, well they don't look like I guess when I look closely actually you can see they look like they are wearing a little bit but it is a really nice scoreboard so um, it was it just used to really annoy me and the amount of cardstock sorry that is really embarrassing that's so dusty um, the amount of cardstock that I'd sometimes just end up ruining because it you know jumped the track so that's why I stopped using it and then I started looking around at other companies and I saw this one and this was again highly recommended you've got the handle there to carry it and I like that you have the two options of either inches or centimeters this one you can buy the top plate for and I have got the top plate so it will convert it into centimeters for you so you know you can do that and uh, yeah this is just really nice but my only downside with this one is the numbers are the same color everything's the same color as this it takes some getting used to I'm completely used to it now but I do sometimes still find myself saying a wrong measurement even though I am scoring it correctly I'm saying the measurement wrong so I guess for me when I'm teaching a tutorial and I'm filming it that can be not the best thing but it, it doesn't happen a great deal of, you know enough I think it's still an amazing scoreboard I do really enjoy it and when I'm not filming it's fine <laughs> so you know take it for what it is but um, yeah it's the hunky dory adorable scoreboard and that's the EK tools uh, a couple of other things so I was talking about the hole punches before and that's the other one is this one here now this one will go through grey board but you do have to punch it kind of um, screw it a few times so it will twist down so I can do it on this because it's self-healing mat but you basically just do that that will slowly disappear um, and it will punch your holes and then all the pieces will go inside there and eventually you can just push them out you get four other mine of uh, snapped off it should just sit in the lid like so when it comes up but it just sits in there you get three sorry extras so you get a very small one then you've got the medium and then that's the larger hole so this is another really good one if you want to well you'll see I use this a lot when I'm making my gift bags because when you want to make a hole punch you know further down maybe for a decorative handle 
this allows you to do that. You can be restricted with the hand ones by it's probably just as I think about an inch. So it's nice to have something like this where you can just punch holes wherever you want. So again, I highly recommend this one. And this is the X Cut um, Screw Punch. So again, that one will be linked below. Still with the tools, I also have this one, which is the X Cut Circle Cutter. This I use loads and loads and loads. I went through a um, a few months actually of using it pretty much on anything. And there's quite a few companies now that have done this as well. And I think they even sell it in Lidl. I'm sure somebody shared one. It's the, or was it Aldi, the So Crafty range. I'm sure it was Lidl actually. Maybe they both do. So it's not just X Cut. And I think even Craft Stash have their own branded one. There's a green one by another company. I think Hunky Dory have one. So there's all kinds of ones. So I'll share it below, but it's called a circle cutter. And you basically adjust your little dial here. So you have centimeters on one side and inches on the other. And you just screw that, move it wherever you need it. So say let's do eight. And then under here is a little blade. This is the center. You put it down and you basically twist that around and it will cut that eight inch circle for you. It's brilliant. It really is. I think this one cost me, $8.99, best $8.99, you know, and it's the same one that I've had from the beginning and I love it, really, really good. So there's another highly recommended uh, tool to have in your craft stash. Also is, I'm just literally looking at what I've got. So this one here, this is your T-square ruler. And this is brilliant when I'm doing a lot of my, maybe like my mini album making or I'm making 3D storage and projects like that where I'm using like a larger area and I need to cut and make sure everything's lined up. T-square ruler, perfect, because this will catch on the side of whatever it is. So let me just grab, I've got a piece of cardstock here. I can put that along here and I can mark five there come down, five again, come down, five. I can then go along here, get a nice perfect line, cut it, do whatever, but it just means that you're getting a perfect, nice straight line each time. So when I'm doing things like the triple wiper card or the sliding card, I use the T-square ruler to do that because you're cutting within a section. So again, if I needed to come in two inches, put a little marker here, and then from that two inch mark, I needed to come down five, put another marker. You know that that line is dead straight. It's really good. Another ruler that's good for that as well, but I find that I use this still more, but it's the Tim Holtz. Because with this one here, all of your measurements are all within the ruler. So you can lie this one down and you can line up say that 11 inch line here with the top of the cardstock. And then you know that that, is gonna, that ruler is now dead straight all the way down because it's straight with that marker there. But also then you can mark half an inch, you know, three quarters. You could then come in. You can, it's just, it's a handy piece. Also, it's good to use with your cutting knife because along this side, you have a metal side. Mine is broke. See there, it's coming away, which is a bit frustrating. I also melted it a bit on my glue gun. <laughs> So I can't even use that straight edge because it's all gone funny there. So I do actually need to just buy a new one and um, yeah, get rid of this one really. But it is, it's a, it's a nice ruler. So, but I find that I go to this more. I just, I don't know, I like that you can just slide that along the top um, quite freely. And this was very inexpensive. This was from Amazon, I think for about 3 99 This one here I think comes in I'm going to say around $8.99, $9.99. So again, you know, you, you know, find what works for you. That was the other bone folder I was looking for. This is the bamboo one. And I really like this. It's a lovely um, folder, bone folder. It was from eBay. It was $2.99. And again, this has been recommended. The thing that I like about this is over time, it's gone so shiny and really kind of smooth on the edges there because it, for a while it went a bit almost a bit kind of rough and you started to see all the grain in the bamboo, but now it's gone so smooth and it's really lightweight. It's just a nice, a nice one. So again, I would recommend that one as well. Then I've got my blending brushes. I know when I shared these a while back on one of my What Did I Get, it just went crazy. So many of you purchased them and you're enjoying them and they are, they're great. So mine are, you know, quite stained now. I've got one, like you can see there, that's got a red uh, kind of tinge to it. So that's the one I use when I'm doing any reds. I've got one that's a bit more yellowy. I think it's this one here. This one's with browns. I do want to get some more and I keep meaning to just put a little sticker on the back. More and more companies have come out with their own branded ones. I think there's one called 
something impressions or personal impressions it's an american company i think it is and they're sort of like colorful like rainbow they're white with all different colored bristles they are gorgeous and they come with a lovely little display stand again it's a it's a you know if you if you want to have something like that i possibly would go for it maybe i don't know but these were makeup brushes and um, they do exactly the same job also picket fence they done them as well um but they're exactly the same. Some people have said they're slightly softer, but it makes no difference. These are just really, really good. So these cost me $6.99, I think it was, for... I got two packs, so I think they might have been 12 in a pack or eight in a pack, something like that. Again, I have the original link. No, actually, sorry, I would tell a lie. I had the original link, and then I found the seller put his prices up. Um, so clearly he saw that there was a lot of traffic going to him because I can see how many of you, I don't know who buys what, but I can see how many people buy different things from the Amazon links that I share. And he had, you know, I sent a lot of traffic to his way and it just really frustrates me when companies then go and hike the prices up and I'm glad I caught it you know, sooner rather than later. And I just, I deleted his link. So you don't go to him anymore. And I found again, the same, exactly the same ones, much cheaper again. And actually after this video, I'm gonna go and check that one to make sure they've not increased it. You don't really wanna be paying any more than, I don't know, eight, nine pound, 10 pound max. Don't pay any more than that. I paid 5.99, 6.99, something like that. Um, and you can buy just like two of them for 99p or something. And I know some of you have picked them up in like the pound shops, dollar stores, things like that. Just don't pay a lot for them, especially if you're starting off, you really don't need to. So, but these, I, I love them. You know, I grab them a lot um, when I'm making my cards and stuff. So that's your blending brushes. Also when I'm making tassels, I like to use these vegetable cut um, scissors. So they're basically to be used in the kitchen to make your veg look pretty, but I use them for making tassels. I have got a blue pair as well, and I need to sharpen these, or I probably will just buy another pair. They're really, really good, and you get lovely effects. It's great for making grass, like I said, tassels, and um, again, I know quite a few of you have gone and got these ones. So yeah, again, another little recommendation. Then I'll quickly talk about glues. I've done a whole glue kind of review, comparison video. I've done a couple now, so I'm not gonna talk about them in depth. I'm just gonna really show you the ones that you see me use. This is the 1000 mil Kalal that I buy. It's much cheaper to buy the 1000 mil than to buy the smaller bottles. I've got this, the cheapest I've seen it was 15.99, which is this one that I got. So, and I think it's the most I've seen is maybe 19.99. So you certainly don't wanna be paying any more than that. I then decant mine into this small tonic this was a Tonic Studios glue. It was just like a PVA tacky glue. So I cleaned it out with warm water, made sure everything was, you know, completely out of the inside from like the original glue, left it upside down, peeled it all out. And it works brilliant now because this one doesn't, you don't get air bubbles so much with this. So it doesn't like, sometimes it can be a bit like a volcano and it just keeps oozing out glue. Whereas I don't get that with this one and I've got the lid there as well. So I just decant this into this and um, yeah, it works really well for me. But also the other one that you can get is this one here, which is the Beacon 3-in-1. And this will work, I think, just the same as this. But I believe the 3-in-1 is easier for people to get that are outside of the UK, especially in the States and Canada. A lot of you have messaged me to say that you can get this one. And I've used this and it works just as well. These are solvent-based glues. So they don't create any warping because there's no water in them. So they won't leave any moisture in your paper crafting. So you won't get any warping at all. Whereas even your art glitter glue, your Dawn Bibby, all those kind of glues, they are still a water-based glue. So although they're precision, so you only a small amount comes out, so you, you, you won't notice any warping. But if you were to take the precision nib off and to use a larger amount, you will see a warping appear. So for me, I just don't like it. I love this stuff. And um, it's just, yeah, it's totally changed the way I craft now because it's it's like a cement on your project. So your card bases, your boxes, the lids, the bases, you put a, a layer of this in between and it really does strengthen everything. So again, can't recommend this stuff enough. I absolutely love it. But also saying about, a, you know, a, a white glue, a PVA based or water-based glue, I do like the Cosmic Shimmer this is the acrylic glue. Again, it's got a precision nib, so a small amount will come out, but this has a, an extremely fast grab. I guess like the Art Glitter Glue and the Dawn Bibby, this one as well has a very, very fast grab. And they're great for small areas, I would say. So like your tabs, when you're connecting lids, you know, all that kind of stuff, then these are very good. The Kalau is, I guess, 
very, it's very like slimy. Um, maybe slimy is not the best word, but you, it's hard. Well, yeah, I guess it can be hard to get a very, very small amount because even that will go a long way, but it does rub off really well. So on little tabs, I wouldn't go for the Kalau or the Beacon. You'll see me go for this one. So that's why I kind of chop and change sometimes between glues, but they're my go-tos. They're the ones I really love but you may also sometimes see me use the Tombow as well. This is extremely tacky and it doesn't dry fully. It will always stay tacky. So if it oozes out the side of your car stock, it's gonna stay sticky. And that's when you'll want to have one of these. And this is a glue eraser and it's brilliant. It is so good. You need to make sure the glue's completely dry. It has to be completely dry. And then just buff over it with this and it will totally remove it. And it does work very well with Tombow, but it has to be completely dry. I know I said it doesn't dry, it doesn't, but it has to be at that, com that kind of tacky stage for this to work. Um, and they're great. Again, very inexpensive. I think this might have been a creative expression. I'm just picking off some of the glue there because that's all I do as I just go around the edges there and just pick off any of that kind of just the black stuff really because that's just your dried glue that you would have rubbed off and um, you can also cut some of it I've used a cutting knife and just kind of trimmed it as well but again inexpensive and they're good little things to save your projects really from you know being ruined so yeah that's that's all I'm really going to talk about in terms of glue if it is something you want to look at in more detail check out my glue review I think I reviewed 16 different glues um, and I talk in more detail about them so yeah go and check that one out if you want going to touch on a few dies and stamps not a lot but ones that I have really fallen in love with and ones that I've used for a year or maybe a bit longer there's a couple that have come in really kind of within the last few weeks but I think they're going to be big hits as well first of all is this one here and I know loads of you will have recognized this one lots of you will have it it's just been one of those stamp sets that I have just found myself going to time and time again I love the three different fonts and the sizes these make not only do they make lovely toppers but they're great for inside of the cards they're great on gift tags and they're just really lovely they're photopolymer they're very good quality as are all of the woodware stamps and I love them and they also then done the Christmas versions which you would have seen me use they got their Merry Christmas Happy Gris Christmas and Seasons Greetings and I used a lot of them when I made the silhouette cards along with loads of other cards as well they're just lovely stamps so these ones here are called big birthday words i will link them below i highly recommend them i just think they're a great one these are like your forever stamps i can't see myself ever getting rid of this unless it just i don't know dissolves or <laughs> just starts to you know just wear which i can't see it will because i do look after my stamps mine are stained just because i don't use stamp cleaner i just use warm soapy water or just rinse them with my um my lint free cloth that's how I maintain my stamps I don't like to use too many chemicals on them I'd rather just use water so that's uh, those ones there also sticking with the stamps because I'll talk about the dies in a moment because I'm not going to, to show too many dies because I think we've all got different tastes but I think when it comes to like sentiment stamps we probably will all use quite similar ones at times these ones here I've not had for too long but I really really like them and these are by card making magic which is by Christina Griffiths. And they're just lovely sentiments to put inside your cards. Again, you can have them on the front if you want. This one I've used a lot, so it's happy birthday to you. On this special day, may the warmest of wishes all come your way. Then also this one here for two very special people, a wish for you today for a forever kind of love that will never fade away. You've got a baby greeting. You've got this one here, which I've used. This craft, this crafted card, handmade with love, created just for you, is sent to wish you happiness in everything you do. This one to a lovely friend on your special day, wishing you happiness in every way. And then you've got some other ones there as well. And I just like it. It's just a nice one that can kind of cover quite a few, you know, different occasions. And then this one here, this has been another big hit. I got this from Trimcraft probably back in the summer and I can honestly say I've apart from Christmas cards I've, I've used it on all, so many cards like just absolutely tons whether it's been on the front of the card or inside again it's got something to cover most of your occasions 
and it's really, really good value for money. This one here is either $2.99 or $3.99. I know it did sell out very quickly on Amazon with the link that I had, and then I was linking to Craft Stash, and again, I'll check below and see, but there's probably some eBay sellers and Etsy sellers that may well have it. You'll have to have a little look if my links, you know, don't obviously um, have it available anymore, but it's by Dovecraft, and it's just, again, a great one. This one is a silicon or acrylic stamps, and um, but they still work really, really nicely. Those are photopolymer and those are photopolymer. I do have lots of other ones, but I don't, like I said, I don't want to go into too much. This was more about, for me, showing you the staples, the things that I think will work really well um, within your craft stash. Um, if you really like this video and you want me to start sharing some other things that may be Christmas related or just birthday specific or my favorite kind of critter stamps, things like that, then just pop the comments below. And if I get quite a few people saying that you'd like to see more of this kind of video then I'm, I'm quite happy to do so. So that's just those stamps there and then just a few dies that I've pulled out. So the first one is this one here. I haven't actually labelled this. This was by Creative Expressions and it's the happy birthday and I've not had this long. They sent me this one because I've started. Um, I'm, an, I'm an influencer now for Creative Expressions um, and they send me very kindly some really really lovely stuff which I have some nice tutorials to come using some of their product. This is one of the Sue I believe it's the Sue Wilson die. Um, the happy birthday was something in die form that I really struggled with. I just, the, the ones I had were too small. Um, they were just a little bit fancy. I just wanted a simple font and a nice size. And this is large and I've already been using it a lot. Um, you would have noticed my tower fold. I think it was the center panel tower fold card that I'd done. It looks really nice on that one. And um, again, very inexpensive, but I just think it's a good staple to have in your within your dies when it comes to a sentiment. And you can also use them separately. So you could have birthday and then you could stamp wishes underneath. You could have the happy as the die cut and you could stamp birthday or you could put happy days or, you know, just, uh, yeah, you know what I mean you could do it with all kinds of things so I really do like that one so I'm going to pop that in there also I like this thanks actually I didn't get it out for, to show you that one but that is a I think it's my favorite things and again I've used it on a lot of um, cards and I've I've done it on my thank you cards for last year Christmas so maybe I'll use it again I don't know it's just really nice anyway then I pulled these ones out so these are all the bright rosa ones um apart from that one there and I love them and I think they're so versatile. You don't obviously have to have all of these, but these are the ones that I've got. And this one here, they come with it as well. And then they're on the back of that one there. Um, and you basically just mix and match them. So this one here is the birthday words. This is sentiment words. This is sweet words and this is friend words. So again, it kind of works in how I kind of said that happy birthday once, so you can kind of mix and match. So you have happy, but the way these work, if you haven't seen me use these before, is you can just have this die and it will just cut the word happy into the cardstock. So you could have a beautiful image, you could have happy through the middle of it or the image coming, you know, over the word. It's, there's just many effects that you can create with this. But also you can die cut it and, and with this frame and it will be a, an actual die cut piece and you could then back it, you could put it, you know, on gift tags or gift bags, you can do all sorts with them. And then you have the birthday in this lovely font here with the shadow die. So again, you can have it just like that, but you can also have it then with its shadow or its bubble. So you can see there how that sits and you get a really nice effect with it. So you would have, there's your happy, and then you'd have your birthday underneath. That's just one way. Or you've got birthday and you could have best, so best birthday. You've got happy there, so you could have happy birthday with that one. Then you've got wishes, so again, birthday wishes, um, best wishes, um, loads just mix and match them they're really really good to use and I have gone to these a lot so when I've had to do any quick cards when friends have asked me to do cards even though I have lots of cards there's always someone that will go oh but I love that one but is there any way you could change that word for that or something these just always kind of are the ones that I go to so that's the birthday words the sentiment words you get hello thinking of you and thank you and then you get you special um, lovely and friend I think that one is 
or family, is it friend, family? Anyway, um, again, the links will tell you exactly what they are. And then this is the friend words, which is beautiful, family, friend, and lovely. And then here you have hello for special, a friend. But I love the A, the way that you've got that effect with it. Um, so really nice. These are the newer ones, these two here. So I've got, you know, some more tutorials that I want to use those with. And then this one here is the sweet words and it says memories, dream, sweet and home. And then here it says lovely, a um, wish, what was that make? No, that's make, create, new and sweet. So you can see you can have home, sweet home, um, new home. Um, so she's covered all occasions, you know, there's something there for everything um, and I just love them I think they're really good. So if you like something a bit more modern more contemporary Then these are really good for that because you know, you they're just they're very different There's something I haven't seen before until you know um, The collection came out and I've really enjoyed using them and it's something again that I, I can't see me ever getting rid of I think there's something I'm gonna keep but also I wanted to pull out this one here. Um, I absolutely adore it and it doesn't have to just be for Christmas. So it's the Ponsettia die set by Simply Made Crafts, but you change the color that you d use this on. So white, silver, pink, you can make some beautiful bouquets. You could have lovely bouquets in your house all year round. Yellow, this will look absolutely stunning in. And they're just huge. So you can see how big they are there. I made a beautiful basket of Ponsettias, which I gave to my nan. And I made one as a um, sample. And um, I loved it and I want to make one for myself. So in the new year, I'm going to think up some really kind of bold and wacky um, project to use these and have it as kind of a feature in my craft room. I think it would look really nice. Um, you get the sprigs there as well, but I just love these great big leaves. And depending on how you distress them, depending on what you cut them in, you use this with your flower foaming, flower forming foam, sorry you get again a different look altogether. So I just think it's really nice. I think it's a nice size die and I think it's something that you have to look past when sometimes these dies come out for Christmas and they really push them as a Christmas die. Think of them, you know, in a different kind of cardstock, a different color, a different fabric, and it will just totally transform it and make it something that doesn't have to just be used for Christmas. So I'm going to prove that to you when I show you what I will do with that in the new year. So that is another one that I love. Then kind of back to tools a little bit because I missed these out, but these are the stamping platforms that I have. So I have the Tim Holtz one, which I really like. And um, yeah, it's a nice piece. It's heavy. There is a weight to it, but I like that you take the Perspect lid and you just change it over depending on whether you're using your rubber stamps or your clear stamps, your photopolymer, your acrylics, things like that. So here it will say rubber, so you know you've got it now ready for to put your red rubber on this side and then stamp it. This needs a good clean, as do a lot of things in my room. I'm, I am doing like a, a winter kind of... Um, clean instead of a spring clean I'm doing a winter clean just after Christmas and stuff just to get everything nice again um, and then if you flip it that way it will then say clear but it's all easy to, to clean off I need to put some new washi on my magnets as well um, but I do really like it and I you, again you'll see me use it a lot but also um, a few months back now on Hachanda they, they, the Hampton Arts were on there and they were had a promotion on for these ones here for 9.99 now <laughs> i don't think it's just me i think it's pretty obvious why these are on hachanda because of the whole misty kind of um copyright thing i think this was caught up in amongst all of that because this is very similar if not <laughs> the same as the misty stamping platform and um the, the reason I, I really like these ones actually is they're much, much more lightweight and there's a lot more bounce and spring within the plastic. The Tim Holtz one, this, this is a very, very strong Perspex and you can't bend that. That is a solid piece. So when you push it down, 
you have to, sometimes I have to stand up and really, really put some pressure on there to get a good impression. So, you know, if you're using red rubber, it's perfect. I don't ever get an issue. But if I'm using clear on this one, I can find sometimes I'm really pushing it. But that's the great thing with the stamping platform is that's the whole point is that if you miss the stamp, because everything's lined up and it's on this hinge, you just ink it, lay it back down again and push down. So, it, you know, it's not a problem, but I do find that it can be a little bit harder to use. Whereas with this, because you have have that flexible here look you can see it just bends you don't find that you have to put as much pressure down on you know your stamps as you do with that one so the deal was like I said 9.99 for the five by seven was this one it's got the measurements there no six by and then that one's what's that like that one hang on <laughs> Was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe? But um, so this is the, the smaller one. So this is great when you're just doing little sentiments and stuff. But I do use this one a lot to put the whole card in. And um, you, all you do with this one is you just take out the foam when you're using your red rubber. So when you've got your stamps that already have the foam attached, attached remove this and just put your card, your paper, whatever in here. The other thing that this one doesn't have, which is a good perk that the Tim Holtz one has, is that this doesn't have a wall around here, so you can put larger stock card stock in here. Whereas with these ones, you are you're restricted because you have this wall around here, so you ha you have to have a card stock that will fit within that section. Saying that, if you're using a clear stamp and you've put the foam in, you could you know, go over the edge. Um, I have done before and you can still kind of get away with it. The magnets are very strong. I do, I've got new magnets and I do need to put washi tape around these, um, but just keep them, you know, spread apart because they could snap. And um, yeah, again, really recommend these. They are lovely. There's lots of different brands out there. There's lots of companies that have them, but these were a bargain. Um, I don't know what the offer is once that deal had gone. So again, I will link these to Hachanda and you can check them out. Um, and I'll see if Craft Stash have them as well because they may well have stocked them. But for $9.99, you can, literally cannot go wrong and they are brilliant. They're really, really nice. So I'm super pleased I got them and I would definitely recommend a stamping platform um, for, yeah, if you love doing your stamping and stuff. They're really, really good. And then lastly, I'm just going to finish with the trimmers that I've got. But also, I just wanted to show you this one. I just found it. It's the We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press. So it's another form of the stamping platform. But the only reason... This one is, is nice, but it doesn't have a magnetic base. But it does have this slightly kind of... I guess it's not sticky, but it's meant to grip your cardstock. Um, but as long as you push it into the corner each time, you know, this one can work. And it has a little sponge corner there so you can obviously squeeze down onto it but it's again it's that thick perspex like the Tim Holtz um, and this one doesn't flip over so it's I guess it's more limited with what it can do for you but it's a nice little one and it done done well for me I did put a magnetic sheet on the back thinking that maybe then I could put some magnets on here but it didn't really work let me just yeah it didn't work if I remember rightly no there's nothing there at all I think there's a little bit there actually but anyway maybe a stronger magnetic sheet might have worked but yeah there is that one as well so I'll, I'll link it because it was a nice little um one I did enjoy using it okay trimmers so I do have a few now I've just brought these two in just to I'll talk through those in a moment but these are the ones that you will regularly see me use so here I've got the cropodile sorry cropodile <laughs> this is the caterpillar crop and I've had this now can say about three three maybe four months so this is a considered purchase this was more I paid oh gosh it was between 50 and 60 I can't remember exactly um, these have been going a long long time and I love it I have fallen in love with it it's brilliant you have a rotary cutter it's safe it will not cut you because it's all concealed there's a light there if you want it it extends to 16 17 18 inches um, and it's brilliant it has I've got nothing to complain about it so again the 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 reason I've gone for this one again I've had other trimmers um but I wanted something that had a lifetime guarantee and the blade does on this so you know as long as I look after all this this will last me forever so I know I've paid that little bit more but now I will never have to buy another trimmer so it, for me that's what I look for I, I want to make that one kind of investment buy and then not have to worry about having to do that you know buy it again so that's the caterpillar crop and I adore it and then the other one I love is this and I think since buying a guillotine 
I I just I I haven't now seen myself go back to any kind of replacement blade trimmer. So I've got my rotary one here, which you know that's that that's the only blade I need now, and it's self cutting as well or self sharpening. So every time it runs along that blade, it it does trim itself. And I'm as long as you push that in each time, you have your little grips here. So you'll see there it kind of swings out. You push it and it locks in, and then you will always get a perfect cut. I've not had any issues, and I use this. A lot I mean you see how much I craft how much I share I do commission work I do pri other private work this is always this gets battered and yeah I've not had any issues and if that was me using a, re a trimmer that needed a replacement blade I can guarantee within the last four months I would have gone through quite a few blades with the amount of cutting I've done and blades can be quite costly so I think I've probably already made my money so I'm, I'm really pleased with it I do I love it but then the other one I love is this one and this is another self sharpening and this is the Tim Holtz guillotine and it is just brilliant and again I've dropped this I've I'm not I wouldn't say I'm like I look after my product but I'm very um you know I just push things around and I shove it under there and things like that so it does get bashed about and it's brilliant I really do like it it's great for those smaller projects you do have the larger one as well um my mum's got the large tonic I can't remember what the name of her one is she's got the orange it's grey with the orange handle another guillotine it's lovely um so I guess, you know, if I had the larger guillotine in this, would I have maybe gone for this one? I'm not sure because they both say that they are self-sharpening and that they have a very good guarantee with the blades and stuff. So I don't know, but this one was a deal and I just love it. I really do. So you, you just find what works for you. But this one, I just think it's, it's just great. It's a nice size. You can easily see all of your markings. You have all the scoring and the grids here. You have your different card sizes here as well and it works for me also what I did do is I got some white acrylic paint and I rubbed it over the letters because I believe when I got these they may have changed it now because I do think it was it was some feedback that was given was that be, this was all black so it was a bit like this here you see that's all green you know you've got to look I can see it all and when you're in person you can see it fine but I think the black on this um people were struggling with so I, th it might, I think it was even Tim himself said get some white acrylic paint on your finger and rub it over and then just rub it over again with a cloth so that's what that is now all within the white there that's all white acrylic um, paint and all along there as well and it doesn't come off that's it it's in there so um, you know it's a quick way to um, to fix it so if any of you do still have this and it's black just get some white acrylic paint so um, you know it might make a big difference so those are the ones that I will always use and hopefully will continue to keep using for a very long time because I love them both but one other ones that I have got so occasionally when I'm making mini albums I will need to cut my grey board and I would never advise cutting grey board grey board grey board with a guillotine because it will you won't get a straight cut it's very dangerous and you could end up slipping and cutting yourself so that's when I use this one here the Fiskars or the We Are Memory Keepers. This was the first one that I had. Well, I had others before that, but this is the first one I started using in my tutorials. Um, and it just clips underneath, and then it will fold out to 12 by 12. But these here, you need to replace the blades, and I found these particular ones were getting blunt quite quickly. So I'll go down the bottom there, and you just have to, how do you, I can't even remember, you clip this one out. Maybe it just, I'm sure it was down the bottom. Well, there you go, anyway. Um, so there's your blade. I'm sure it's in there and you just yeah you just clip it in and you just you know cut away but you also have a scoreboard attached so the bottom here you have your stylus and you can just you know score so again if you're starting off and you want something that can do more than just cut and more than just score then get the ones that are combined so this is your scoreboard and your cutting tool in one um, and I enjoyed using it when I had it. It was good, but then I found, you know, I was replacing the blades. So that's when I then moved on to the Fiskars. So that's this one here. So again, this one has your extension. Um, and again, lift it up there and then you can take your blades out on that little larger opening, pop them in and you can cut along it. And I do like this one. And this is the one you'll see me use when I'm cutting any gray board and things like that. And um, yeah, it's just really nice. But again, you do have to get the replacements. I think these ones, I think you can get three, a pack of three, maybe four. And they're $5.99 up to $7.99. You can get them in Hobbycraft. But again, I did find, I again, my level of crafting, I guess, might be quite different to most because 
I do a lot. I craft every single day and I can make maybe three, four projects a day. And if I'm making a mini album, you know, it's a lot of cutting. So I am using them I, sometimes maybe a lot more than others. So, you know, if you're someone that maybe just crafts one or once or twice a week, maybe, then you'll find that maybe having something with a replaceable blade isn't going to be too much of a problem because you won't be replacing it as much. So you just need to see what works for you. But because of the level of crafting that I was doing, or the amount, should I say, um, this one now is perfect for when I cut my grey board because all of what I did is when my blades go blunt for paper cutting, I put a black mark on them because they're still sharp enough to cut through your grey board or your... Um, chipboard so now I've got loads of blades all my blunt blades from before actually now cut my grey board perfectly so this is my grey board cutter that's all I use it for and if you ever wonder well, when do you know when a blade is going blunt you you can probably you would you should be able to tell because when you pull it down on your cardstock it will buckle it might actually just pull the cardstock along the blade or you'll get a fluffy cut. So when you take the cardstock out, you might have lots of fluffy edges on it. It's just not getting a sharp blade, um, a sharp cut, and that's when you would need to replace it. So um, yeah, so that was just a little bit on the trimmers. And then finally, I think I'm gonna keep this short. I'm just looking on my monitor and I'm coming up to an hour. Hopefully I'll be able to edit a little bit, just some of the gaps in between the envelope punch board. This is the older one. I believe there's one now with an extension. Um, so when I share the link, it will take you to the newer one. Um, I just haven't got around to it. I keep saying I should, but it's, it's a great little tool as it is anyway. Um, but if you do like to make bigger cards and you follow my channel and you make a lot of the display cards and again, the larger styles, then you will need to be able to make your own envelopes. And an envelope punch board is perfect for that. You can also make other things with it as well. It's not just envelopes. There are lots of tutorials. I've also got some myself where you can make gift, bag, um, yeah, gift bags, gift boxes, Christmas crackers, and uh, lots more. So they're a really nice kind of, um, it's a really nice tool to have because there's so much more that you can get out of it. And again, we all know we are memory keepers. They're a great brand. Their products are really good and they last. So I've had this for quite a few years now and I do really enjoy using that one. And also very quickly, I'm just gonna show a few punches whilst I've got my drawer here. And these are ones again, I would say are again I would recommend they're useful ones to have within your craft stash so here I've got my corner punch so if you like to round off your corners whether it be on your card mini album pages on the top of a gift bag they're really handy to have this is the X cut one again I'll link it below and it's great it does just that it will just give you that nice curved corner rather than a, a square corner the other thing I love, and again, is relatively new. I've had it within the, the, the later part of the year, I'd say the last five months of the year, and that is this Tag Punch. So this is by Hunky Dory, but again, there's lots of companies that do this. I know that Dress My Craft have one, and there's a few other brands as well. I think even Hobbycraft have their own out now as well. So I will share as many links as I can, but it's lovely. You can get these three style gift tags. You can have them as long as you want, but the widths are one and a half, two, and two and a half brilliant and the other ones I love are any kind of like shaped punches so I have here the two inch I have a two and a half scalloped one I have a one and a half scallop and then I also have a one and a quarter and a one so I could now punch from here all the way down and they would layer up on top of each other really nicely um, just any of these are really handy when you have a sentiment and you want to just quickly you know cut it out um, if you want to make little finger pull, like um, thumb, what's the word? You know, when you've got like a, a gift card or something, you want to pull it out and you want that little kind of half moon. Things like this will work great for that. Um, and just punches in general are just really quick. And just that ease of, you know, to just speed up any crafting. You might think, oh, I just really need to quickly make a quick sentiment topper if you've got a punch you don't have to worry about getting your die machine out looking for the die it just does it straight away for you um, and the other one I've got is this one here as well which is dress my craft which does the corners but you have two sides two sizes so uh, you know have a little look around for corner punches I'll share the links to these ones below but there are others as well so um, I'm just really telling you the things that I think would benefit you in your craft stash and then you can go and see you know what ones are available and are out there 
So there is a ton more stuff I could talk for probably another three hours and still not cover everything. You know, there's Nuvo drops, sequins, pens, pencils, everything. So like I said, if it's something that you do like and you would like me to maybe share some other videos focusing on other materials, products, different brands, things like that, just leave the comment, leave a message in the comments and um, yeah, I'll have a look and see if it's something that more people say. So I hope you found it useful. I do get these questions asked a lot. So that's why I just thought I'd just quickly throw it all together in a video. I'll try and make sure it is within, under the hour um, and just, uh, yeah, make sure you had a cup of tea or something. I'll put a thing up to say, <laughs> grab a coffee and a little something to eat and then uh, sit back and uh, watch the video. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Bye.